everyone. I'm Jamie Purvis with Galvanize, and as part of the Who Not Do series, I'm super excited to be joined by Jenny Dell, who's the anchor of CBS Sports HQ, and I'm so excited to talk to you. How are you? I'm doing great, just trying to survive down here in Florida with all this craziness. Right, exactly. I know, I'm sure everyone's asked you what you've been doing to stay busy. Have you been reading books, like, like benching anything? But I want to know, what has been the most fun and rewarding experience that you guys have done as a family? Oh gosh, there's so many. So initially I was actually supposed to be on the road for three months uh, shooting campus seats, but I have a seven month old and a 21 month old. So at the time the baby was only three months old and uh, I was initially going to take her on the road with me. And then obviously with everything with COVID, the entire shoot got canceled. But because of that, this is the first time in probably like my whole life that I've actually been forced to sit still and just enjoy time with my family. And I was, I'm able to watch my babies grow, which is the best gift of all. So the babies are, are just, uh, they're, they're at fun ages right now. So it's seeing their personalities blossom. And, and this is actually one of the first times that my husband and I have really just spent like a lot of quality time together. So for four and a half months now we have been um, inside these four walls and <laughs> enjoying each other's time. Has that been exhausting at all? It sounds like it's been great, but have you ever had a moment of like, frozen? this is tough. <laughs> We've had a ton of challenges. I love to work, like working. I, I love being a mom, but I feel like I'm a better mom because I get to go to a job that I love and talk to adults and talk sports and I've missed that dearly. So there's definitely been moments where there's like a little bit of a, I need to get out of this house and I need a break. And, um, you know, anytime you're, you're stuck with the same people for months and months and months at a time without even going to a restaurant or going to the grocery store or just getting out of the house to go get a coffee, I think it tests anyone. I want to talk about starting your family. You've been super open about IVF and the whole process. You would run to the sidelines during a game in the middle of your job to give yourself a shot just to like make sure that this happens for you. Like, was there ever a moment where you just like kind of let yourself like think and just, I don't know, like not break down, but just be like very emotional and vulnerable? Absolutely. I mean, I think and I think that's why it was important for Will and I to be open about everything that we we're going through with IVF, because I think there is such a stigma when it comes to infertility. And so many people go through it that I had no idea until I opened up about it. And then I was amazed about friends, family that I didn't even know were struggling that reached out and they're like, we're so thankful that you're talking about this because we haven't been able to publicly talk about it, whether that's a personal decision that you make or not. But what I found is by talking about it, it, it makes it more of the norm. I mean, it, it happens like that's, that's life. And the fact that you can then talk to and speak with people that have been through that experience before, it made me feel much more comfortable about the entire situation. And it, it's tough because I wanted to be pregnant more than anything. Like we wanted a baby more than anything. And my sister got pregnant during that time. My best friends got pregnant during that time. It was like everyone around me would be like, we're going to, we want to have a baby. And then a month later, they're like, surprise, we're pregnant. And you feel such joy and happiness for them while also just being heartbroken for yourself. And there's so many emotions because you, you feel guilty that you're like, angry and you don't, you want to be the happiest in the world for them because it's such a blessing. But at the same time, I'm like, why can't we have that? And I just remember like hysterically crying in a hotel room. I was somewhere on the road with Will for baseball. And I was like, I just, I can't put on a happy face anymore. And I was like, I need to just take some time to just be hurt. And that's okay. And I think that that's what I wanted to make sure people knew. It's like, it's okay to to just be upset for yourself and also very happy for others, but take moments where you're like, I need this time to just break down. And the best thing that I did was found my best now best friend, Claire, who lives in Washington on an infertility Facebook group. And we connected over everything. We kind of had the same timeline with our IVF cycles that we were doing. And we, to this day, still talk like 30 times a day. 
And just to have someone to relate to and talk to about it um, was so helpful for me that I wanted to be able to be that voice for other people. Have you been able to connect with her all the way in Washington, like see each other in okay, person? Okay, so yeah, this is the best. This is the best story ever. Okay, so Claire and I started talking when we first went through our IVF um, cycles at the end of 2015. That's when we were both like starting off our IVF process. So we were Facebook messaging like all day, every day. And my husband was like, why don't you just exchange numbers with her? Like, what are you doing? Right. And I was like, you're right. So I was like, hey, you know, not sure if this is too much, but here's my cell. And we just started talking and texting, but we never met. And um, when I was, so I got pregnant and then her first cycle failed. And then she got pregnant after that. So our babies are now a month and a half apart. And when I first got pregnant with Madison, I ended up having a lot of medical issues and I was in the hospital at 30 weeks. There was just a lot of moving parts. Will had just gotten hurt, had a career ending baseball injury. So there was just, there was a lot going on. And my best friend, Lexi, who uh, was my next door neighbor growing up, who I've known since the day that she was born, wanted to surprise me in the hospital. And she was like, I was going to come just show up to Florida and surprise you in the hospital. And she was like, but then I thought about it. So I'm sitting in the hospital one morning and I have, there's a knock on my door and it was my mom. And I was like, hi mom. And I like just had pancakes or whatever. I was like sitting in my bed and my mom's on, it looked like FaceTime, but it was actually, she was recording a video. And I was like, I was like, who's on FaceTime? Like, what are you doing? And all of a sudden Claire walked into the hospital room. So Lexi had paid for Claire to fly from Washington to Florida and surprised me in the hospital. We've never met before. And she walked in and I like jumped out of the bed. And we're like, oh my God. So she spent uh, like four days with me here in Florida in the hospital. And it was amazing. And like, we just like sat and talked all day and she, you know, she'd go back to her hotel at night, but like all day, all night, we were just, she was pregnant. I was pregnant. Like it was amazing. It, you know, it's just, it's one of those things. It's like you randomly meet a person and they become just instant. Like there's something, there's a connection. And that's there. And she, yeah. And, and now that our babies are like growing up together, but it's just, it's so nice to have someone that you can like relate to on so many different levels and that we've been through kind of like this crazy process together. Yeah. That's awesome. I feel like in this industry, it's just so male dominated. So just having girl connections, yeah. whether you're going through something as serious as that, or you just need someone to talk to. Right. I feel like that's what the whole galvanized thing is about too, just having this girl connection all over the world. Like I haven't met so many of the girls, but we all just feel so connected. And I just think that's so important in our industry. Yeah. yeah. And then you see the, the hashtag, you know, women empowering women that's going around right now and everyone posting the black and white selfies and, it is, it's so important to have those relationships. And as you mentioned, galvanize and, and the fact that you feel like you have a little family there. It's like all the sideline reporters, everyone's always like, oh, are you going, are you against each other? Like, are you supporting each other? People like want you to be pit against someone else. And I'm like, no, like, what are you talking about? Like, like these are girls that through the ups and downs, we're there for each other and we'll support each other and try and pick each other up and, and do anything that you can to make their day better, whatever it is. And I just think that, I don't know if it's a male thing that's trying to like pit people against each other, but I found in this industry, there's not been one female that's ever tried to, to tear me down or, you know, be negative mm -hmm. in any way. That's awesome. If you can give one piece of advice to all of my galvanized sister and I, something that we can hold on to forever, what would it be? Oh gosh, only one. <laughs> Two. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think the main piece of advice that, that people have always told me, but I never at one time didn't put into effect and I wish I did is never be afraid to ask for help. Um, as I mentioned, I think we're, we're in a little sorority over here and all the girls that are in front of you and all the girls behind you, I mean, we need to do everything in our power to lead the way and support each other. And I think there was one point in my life when I just left the Red Sox and it was my first year working on the NFL at CBS and I'd never done football before. And I 
I needed help. I, I, I was struggling and I was in over my head and I wanted to prove to everyone that I belonged there. But if I would have just taken a step back and said, you know, I need some assistance here. I need some help. I'm, I'm having trouble with A, B, C, and D. I think things would have ended up differently for me. And I'm so blessed with what I'm doing now. And I, I love my job and my crew. Um, but I think that it's okay to ask for help and just know that the people around you will be there to support you in that. That's so awesome. I could talk to you forever, but we're out of time, which is so sad, but I just want to thank you so, so much. I've been a fan of you forever, and I just really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Oh, you're so welcome.